Hi there, I'm Sylvia DiPietro, and welcome to this episode of Live Your Life by the Numbers. Today, we're going to be discussing the eight life path number, your heroic mission for success in this, in this lifetime. Your life path number is that path that you chose before you were born as your heroic mission. It's something that if you follow the path, you must be successful. So let's do a deep dive right now and let's head on over. I'll share my screen and let's look at the eight life path number. The eight life path number says, I rule. It's an even number like the two, the four and the six. It's an extrovert. It's the kind of number that is more convivial in nature, sometimes more authoritarian in nature, and at other times, the least emotional of all the numbers. Now, why would that be? And that is because the eight life path number, or all eights, no matter how they show up, are significant of Saturn. And you usually will find Capricorn predominantly placed somewhere in their natal astrology. Looking at the number eight, we know that it has, it possesses divine intelligence as to the right path of living, the most meaningful kind of life. The number eight stands for great organization. It's a powerhouse of judgment, usually has very, very strong judgment. It's balanced a lot more than the other numbers. It's a number that pulls in material success, authority, and as I mentioned, powerful, materialistic, and the number of karma. The eight symbolizes karma. So what you reap in this life, you get back, it comes back to you in one form or another, usually materialistically in nature in this life. It's the number of balance. It's the yin and the yang swinging here both ways. Most of the time it's made of four fours, but the eight can be also made of a two and a six life path, a 62 life path, the 72, a 71 life path, because seven and one equals the number eight. So a quick review rolling up to the number eight life path of your heroic mission in life would be the number one life path says I rock. I'm a number one. I'm it, as I've mentioned before. The number one likes to start things, but doesn't like to finish things. It usually is handing off to a number two that is more cooperative in nature. It's the peacemaker. It's ruled by usually the moon. It's more feminine, where the one is ruled by the sun. The one life path is ruled by the sun and it's more masculine in nature. The three is the creative genius that says, where's the party? Many of our artists are threes and it, uh, it's fun loving. It's creative in every field of life that you can think of. The fours place a foundation, either rectangular or square underneath all their undertakings. So the four builds upon a firm underbelly, a firm foundation in life. It's a nose to the grindstone number, the number four, and it is the organized worker. The eight life path, ironically, like the number four, is a workaholic. The eight sometimes has to learn balance instead of having balance because it works morning, noon, and night, usually has a number of things in the, a number of, of projects in the fire. And it symbolizes uh, 
good judgment. It symbolizes the entrepreneur. It symbolizes a publishing. It symbolizes real estate building, anything having to do with the earth and Capricorn, feet on the ground, that steady climb going all the way up. That's the number eight life path. The number five says, I promote. I am progressive. I improve upon everything that you do. The number six life path is responsible. It's caring. It's loving. It carries a lot on its shoulders. It's the number of voice. And because of its responsible nature, it's ruled by Venus, by the way. So it likes very beautiful things. Has Taurus in it usually somewhere in its natal chart. And it has also a good financial pull because of the fact that what you give out there in this intelligent swim of vibrations that we all live in, that we're born in, our life path comes in, in the swim of intelligence, the intelligent life that's out there, that's all around us, that is vibrating. So the six has a very strong financial pull. It's paid for all the responsible giving and um, the respect that it carries. The seven is a number that analyzes. It says, I analyze, takes nothing at face value. It digs very deep like the scorpion has a sting to it, often he likes to live alone, doesn't like to be bothered by people, likes silence, the silence of the day, accomplishes a lot in the quiet of the day. These are our rocket scientists, our famous writers, our analyzers in almost any field, people that can work in the quiet. And then we come to the number eight that says, I'm powerful, I rule. Now, anyone with an eight doesn't have to be a life path number. The number eight in and of itself is going to look for a material feedback in life. And that eight can be in its life path number. The eight can be in its birthday number which is extremely powerful, the eighth birthday between the number 17 year of life, excuse me, the number 27 year of life and the number 54 year of life in that period, 27 to 54. That's where that eighth birthday would be very, very powerful. It might be significant in its achievement number which is what you must achieve in order to be successful within the life path number. The achievement number is the easiest number of all outside of your birthday number that's just sitting there for you to learn its meaning. Your achievement number is arrived at by adding your month and day of, of birth together. So your achievement can be, if it's an eight, it could be you're born on February 6th, you're born on June 2nd, you're born on January 7th, you're born on July 1st, you're born on April 4th, anything that the month and the day of year adds up to an eight. That's your achievement number. Later, we'll be discussing the pinnacles of success. There are four of them of success and achievement, the first being the longest and the others being nine years each. And if an eight appears in any one of those four pinnacles of success and attainment, you are going to be working very hard to attain and manifest success on the um, material level. The challenges, well, you, net, you get no attainments 
and gifts in this life without challenges. So the eight challenges, one where you're being told to handle your finances carefully and to make sure you attain on the material level. If you're lazy, you won't be, you know, you won't be attaining anything. So let's take a look basically at the family of eights. They all add up to an eight life path. And that would be 817. Now we're running into the double digit numbers, the 26, the 35, the master love number 44, which doesn't show up very often, but it is out there. The master number 44 in this situation is made up of those two foundation numbers of the four. And they're a foundation number that is a life path number of a 44 is usually an eight on steroids. It's not only powerful, but it's powerful like this. It's vibrating very fast. You can also have a life path number of a 53. Five plus three is an eight. That's a life path number where things come woof, flying in out of nowhere. And that's because the five is the more mobile number and the three is behind it as the double digit number. And it's a creative number. You can also have a life path number of a 62, which is a solid boxed in number very often of a person carrying very heavy responsibility, home, family, and work because the six number comes first and also dealing with children and large groups of people because the two comes second. The 71 is another master number of specialization because the seven comes first. It's a number of analysis and the one is behind it. And then we have the 80 or the eight life path that comes off of a, a spiritually blessed number such as 80 because the second number of that double digit number is a zero and any number that has a zero at the end brings with it cosmic blessings. That would be a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on because of the zero. Now the eight has wonderful positive attributes to it. As I said, power, decisiveness. It's almost, almost exacting in its decisiveness. Its judgment is excellent. It just has to be careful of, you know, expounding its judgment to people who don't want to hear it. Sometimes you have to bite your tongue because people are not ready to hear the truth. But the eight life path carries very good judgment. And that's why it attains these lofty, respected positions of high authority. It's a discipline number. It's a workaholic. It's enterprising in nature. It's an efficiency expert. It's very responsible for any project or projects that it's involved in. It's considered very influential in life because it's self-confident. It's not afraid to go out there and pioneer new territory. And it's venturesome. On a passive level, it's the opposite of courageous. It's passive. It's powerless. It's disorganized, unreliable, something you won't hear of many eights. An eight would sooner show up 15, 20 minutes early, even a half hour early, rather than be late. It's reliable. On a passive level, it's unreliable, disorderly, fixed, slipshod, doesn't do the job right, inept, insecure, just the opposite of powerful, fearful within, insecure, timid, vulnerable, and cowardly. On a negative level, it takes that power and promotes it outwardly too forcefully. Negatively, the eight could appear tyrannical has to be careful, restrictive, refusing to move out of a rigid box 
unyielding. It's its way or the highway. Afraid of failure, fanatical, inconsiderate. It's working all day. It's too involved in its projects and it forgets its responsibility that it also might have to home family or loved ones. Instead of tyrannical, it might be too militant. Few rungs, vibrations below tyrannical, cold-blooded, rebellious, fraudulent, not too many of them but there are eights out there that have been known to defraud other people and aggressive. Remember that the eight life path is the number of karma. So if anybody's going to go out there on a negative level and try to defraud somebody, what you give out is what you get back. The eight should never trust to luck. It's not like the three, it's not like the six, it's not like that humanitarian number. These numbers, to some extent, they give on the human level so much that there's an elemental block. Sometimes they can push their luck, especially the three. Very lucky number. The eight is not. Step on the crack. We used to say when we were kids, step on the crack and you break your mother's back. Do something illegal, you're more apt to get caught than um, be, get away with it. So the eight has to be doubly careful, okay? But the eight has a number of gifts, as I mentioned. It's masterful. It's a master of authority. The eight is usually, would usually, I would say, appear in the 10th house of your astrological chart of your success, your attainment, your career attainment is up there in the 10th house. Um, it's these tens or efficiency experts. They're masterful supervisors. They have all kinds of executive ability, fine judgment, wise beyond their years, very wise. The staying power, the Eight will work at something until it gets something finished. It's an efficiency expert where it will, it's the, it's, as I mentioned, it's got Capricorn in it. It's um, the number of time that the clock is ticking, life is ticking. So it's nose to the grindstone trying to attain now, right now, not wasting time. It works for very important causes and possesses an, an element of divine awareness of learning through experience, not wanting to make the same mistake twice. It possesses wisdom often without judgment and will give you a solid answer without being um, prejudicial. Um, falling into prejudice. On a negative level, it's got to be very careful to strain for too much power, strain for too much attainment, um, demanding recognition, wearing its body out, then being disappointed when it doesn't attain on that level, impatient for others. It's got to watch out for financial difficulties because, as I said, it doesn't have that luck value of the six and the three and the nine that pull in finances easily. The eight receives what it works for. It is the number of karma for good and bad. The eight has to refrain from trying to repress others. Oh, no, I don't want to hear you. I'm not interested in your view. Well, that's not going to be, that's going to fall back on you, that kind of attitude when you have an eight life path. It's got to be also careful of physical and mental strain. Its usual aspects, it 
arrives at the rewards of the double fours. Often the eight is consists of two fours. As I mentioned, the four is nose to the grindstone. And that solid foundation that it puts under its projects for attainment. It's got a stable vision that it keeps moving upward, 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 like the Capricorn goat, slowly climbing up the mountain, learning, feeling below it so that it doesn't make the same mistake twice. It has the ability to visualize great projects before it embarks on them, usually for the benefit of mankind. It provides order no matter where it goes. An eight life path has trouble living without order. So for example, it's probably gonna make its bed every morning. It's gonna want a clean house to come back to, clean living. It's going to want stability in its life. The eight does not like surprises of any nature. It's kind of a control freak. Um, but it, live, it lives its life that way solidly. So there aren't any massive control, you know, surprises in life. It is the mastermind behind some very large projects for humanity that of, of an accomplished nature. It believes in moral inte integrity and its moral integrity does bring material gain. It's impartial to facts and figures. When it analyzes something, no matter even if they, if it's unhappy about the result, it will face the result more than run away from it. It's got great inner strength in the case of emergencies. An eight life path is sort of like the double A team in the, in the, in the, situation where an emergency springs up, you want to be with a number eight life path. It might appear highly unemotional, um, serious, but it's excellent in an emergency. No matter if it falls apart a half hour later, an hour later, at the time that you need somebody in the case of an emergency, Call your eight life path friend, think like that. They're Johnny on the spot. The eight is the number of loyalty, trustworthiness, and confidence. Now let's take a look and analyze the life path number of Richard Gare, who was born on August 31st, 1949, he's a Virgo, and his name at birth was Richard Tiffany Gare. So as you know, how do we arrive at your life path number, that path to success that's gonna get us where we're going if we live that life that we chose for ourselves? in a formal life. And believe me, to live a perfect life path number, you don't have to, you don't have to believe in reincarnation. You just have to live your life by the path your numbers show. In this situation, if we add eight plus 31 plus 1949, we come to the number 1988. And if we add one plus nine, plus eight, plus eight, we come to the total 26. Now two plus six is eight, but the double digit behind the eight is a 26. It is a very sociable and very convivial number eight. Of all the number eights, the 26, most, most convivial, most loving, loves children, loves animals, loves people loves to carry responsibility because it's got the two that brings groups together in a cooperative, peaceful way. And it is responsible by carrying the number eight. So it usually has a nice 
financial pull to it. As I said, it gets along with people. It's the softer, gentler of the eights. But Richard Gare has a four birthday made up of the three and the one. And as an actor who puts a foundation, which is the four, under all of his artistic projects, they are composed of the creative three, which comes first, and himself, which is the one which comes second. The 31 birthday is a number that loves to argue. So I would assume he's argued with a few producers, but at the end of the day, the 31 four has got a peacemaker quality to it and really likes peace after the argument. It likes to, it's a makeup number. Let's look at his name. The vowels in your name are composed, create your soul urge. Your soul urge, being your vowels, are indicated above a name, above the vowel, and they represent what your soul already knew when you came here, when you were born. The vowels in your name consist of your consonants, and they represent not how you are, how you appear to others. So with the name Richard, Richard here appears to others to be very, very individualistic, He's got the 10th birthday. He's able to self-actualize because of the 10. He's able to go out there and do a solo and to create very successfully on a solo level by himself. It's an introverted number. The one, the three, the five, the seven, and the nine. Here, Richard's soul urge in his first name is a 10. His consonants in the name Richard vibrate to the 33. How he appeals to others, appears to others, is a very humanitarian individual who cares about humanity and others, especially those who would be suffering. And we know that he is a follower of the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan cause and the plight of the Tibetans. So that would fall under that 33 master number, that global humanitarian number of the 33. Let's look at his middle name, Tiffany, which is an, a name, your middle your middle name carries your emotional self. So let's look at his soul urge on the emotional level of his middle name. Tiffany carries the vibration 17. And here the Y in Tiffany being the third syllable in the name Tiffany, Tiffany, and it's pronounced as a vowel at the end, like the E, Tiffany. And when a Y is in a, is in a syllable that doesn't have a vowel in it, it becomes a vowel for our computing purposes. So, in Richard Gare's middle name, Tiffany, in this situation, in his vowels, that Y in his soul urge becomes a vowel. The number 17 as a soul urge is usually very good with money. One plus seven is an eight on the material plane. Let's look at his consonants in the name Tiffany. I don't think he uses it very much. I, I had to look it up to find out what his middle name was. But his consonants, how he would appear, appear to others emotionally is a 19. That's a number of the past life. It's a karmic number. The past life misuse of one's personal force, personal power. So in this life, 
he may be dealing with many, many forceful people because that's what he was in a formal life. And he would also have probably already in this life um, championed the ability of dealing with very pushy people. Now let's look at what his family named Gare, what soul urge it carries and what consonant it carries, what consonants it carries. And by the way, the consonants in your name are called the quiescent self. It is not who you are, but who you appear to be to other people. Once again, in the name Gare, the family name, it's got a lot of power to its punch. It's a very individual, individualistic name. It's a name that can rock, stand on its own, and move forward in life because five plus five, the letter E carries the five vibration. Five plus five is a number 10, and it's cosmically blessed because of the zero at the end of 10. It's consonants or its quiescent self is a karmic number, the number 16, the past life number of illicit love affairs, and a number also, ironically, that owes a duty to the feminine vibration. It could be a sister, a mother, it could be a wife, it could be women in general, it could be the woman's movement. So when we want to see how Richard Gare must live in order to be successful, we add all the vowels to all the consonants or quiescent self in the name. So we would add the 10 plus 17 plus 10, and those vowels add up to a 37, which is a very strong protective number for home and family. When we add that number to the vibrations of the consonants, which are 33, 19, and 16, we come to the number 68, which does very well with large organizations, maybe movie studios, teaching, teach acting. When we add the 37 to the 68, we come to the number 105 as an expression of how he must live. And we, when we add one plus zero plus five, we get the number six. So Richard Gare, in order to be successful, when we add his total name together is a six. It's a number of voice, responsibility, artistic creation, uh, must foster respect, live in the arts, a very heavy love vibration the six carries. And as we know, he would probably be paid very, very well for whatever he appears in, whether he produces it or he backs it financially. So that would be it for the eight life path number and for analyzing Richard Gare's number. I want to thank you very, very much for joining me on this episode of the eight life path number and analyzing Richard Gare's life path to success, as well as a little extra something by analyzing his soul urge and his consonants. I am not giving readings. By day, my vocation for over 20 some odd years has been a trust in estates, elder law, and a uh, mental hygiene, mental health litigator. So I am an attorney by day and my vocation for the last 50 years has been the study of numbers, which is my gift to you all. It's my pleasure to have these episodes and to teach you how easy it is to live your life by the numbers and to add one plus one or subtract numbers. It's a very easy Voc avocation to learn, yet it's just 
accurate as heck on the numbers as to which way you should go in life. So it's, it's very important that, you know, studying something like this is not only fun, but you'll find out that it adds up in life. Now I've got four wonderful books out there that I enjoyed writing. One was really written in 1991, but I've revised it. And it's volume one and volume two of Live Your Life by the Numbers, Your Guide to Numerology. The second volume is a favorite book of mine that I labeled, labored over. It's Raise Your Kids by the Numbers, Your Child's Guide to Numerology. And that's all about the vibrations of children before, right up to about 18, their early 20s, so that you can look at your children and analyze their numbers as they're growing and guide them along the path instead of having a nervous breakdown and worrying that they're never going to be successful in life. The last book that I wrote is a book about double digits. You'll notice that many of the life path numbers that I reduced to a single number and the family of the numbers that I show you have double digits behind the solo life path number. And those double digit numbers are very, very expressive. They show me why you as a specific life path number, say an, an eight life path number, which I am, that we both may be eight life path numbers, but I attain my path of success in one way and you attain your path of success or your heroic mission in life another way. So I really, really would be greatly appreciated if you like and you subscribe, you like this show and want to subscribe to the show, I would be pleased. Please leave me a message down below. Let me know if there's anybody famous that you'd like me to analyze there their life path number or their, not their name in general, uh, please leave me a little message. I have these books out there. They're ready to be purchased on Amazon. I'm always grateful for a review and I'm grateful. I live a life of gratitude every day. I ask you, please don't waste this day. This day is more precious than you'll ever think than you'll ever know. Please live your life by the numbers. Come see me again. We've got all those other life path numbers that are up for you to hear and analyze. You might have a friend that's another life path number. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. And thank you so much for watching and joining me today.